Good morning, Common Ground. Hey, welcome to uh, 24th September, well, last Sunday of September, uh, Sunday morning worship here with our Common Ground traditional service. And glad you're, you're here with us and made Common Ground your place of worship for uh, this Sunday. Uh, we have a few announcements. Uh, there'll be a fellowship lunch, pizza immediately following the service. So uh, please do stay and grab some uh, pizza and have fellowship with one another. And there is a youth Bible study immediately following the uh, service. So uh, if you're in youth, middle school, high school, uh, grab a slice or two of pizza and a walk into your uh, normal classroom. And if there are any children, elementary school age children who are left behind or here, still here, uh, there's a children's church going on right now in room 110. So if you wanna go join them, you're more than welcome to uh, go join the children's service. And obviously we need volunteers uh, for many services. Uh, even today, uh, Chaplain Beck, uh, please pray for uh, him. Uh, he is our uh, children's ministry uh, lead uh, chaplain and his father had to go in the emergency room this morning. Uh, they're uh, checking whether it was a stroke or a brain aneurysm and they're getting some tests done. So please uh, pray for him and his father and his family uh, this morning. So he couldn't make it, which means that we only have one person leading the children's ministry. And by regulation, we're supposed to have two background check volunteers to be in a room with children. Uh, so there are other people who stepped up to uh, be part of it. Uh, but again, we don't want to have to scramble. So if that's been your heart, uh, you don't have to do it every Sunday. Uh, you could be a reserve. Uh, something like this happened, you can kind of step in. Uh, so uh, please, uh, if you're not sure, if you're thinking about it, the least you can do is get your background cleared so that you decide that I want to do it, then you're ready uh, rather than, because the background check takes some time. Uh, so uh, please uh, volunteer. And then we do volunteer for uh, the youth Bible study. Uh, Chapman Worthy leads it, but he, we need to have another adult in the room as well. And then we could always use more choir and orchestra. And the orchestra has grown significantly. Uh, so. Uh, we could use more uh, volunteers at orchestra and ushers and fellowship and every aspect of the ministry, we could use volunteers. Okay. And uh, please remember uh, all these different uh, community Bible studies that be part of it. Uh, we need to learn and grow in the scripture. So uh, please uh, be part of these Bible studies. And the parish council meeting will be postponed, will happen the 8th October second Sunday of October the, is a Columbus Day weekend rather than uh, next weekend. It's a true sub weekend and other stuff going on, so we'll postpone another week. So 8 October, 09 in room 110. So if, so if any of you are interested in how this service and some of the decisions are made and if you have concerns uh, for this service and ideas for this service, please come and be part of it, uh, part of the parish council meeting. Right. Is there any, anyone who's visiting with us for the first time? First time visitors visiting with us or just moved here, attending service for the first time? Please raise your hand, I won't embarrass you. Uh, Chaplain Kim, I think, was it last Sunday? He said, I won't embarrass you and then ask a bunch of questions and I won't do that. Uh, so I won't embarrass you, I promise I won't embarrass you. I won't ask you any questions, just raise your hand. So we just wanna make sure that yeah, you have something in your hand to remember Common Ground service and hopefully that bride works for you to come back. All right, so uh, any, uh, any first time visitors? All right, we have one, all right, welcome, welcome. We have a, okay, well, little young man is proud to be a first time visitor, but parents are ashamed. Okay, but it's okay. <laughs> uh, then we have another one back there. And a blue shirt with the glasses, gentlemen. All right, well, welcome, welcome, and then we'll make sure that uh, we have time to welcome one another. And is this anybody's last Sunday, last Sunday with us, worshiping with us? Yes, we'll, we will, uh, so it is our, uh, the choir director and music director's uh, last Sunday uh, with us. You know, we said goodbye to uh, her husband, Adam, last Sunday, uh, so uh, uh, this is the last Sunday, and we will uh, present her in a bit. But anyone else, last Sunday here with us? No? 
All right, then can we all stand and uh, greet one another and welcome uh, those who are here for the first time. Scriptural call to worship comes from the book of Psalm 105. Give praise to the Lord, proclaim his name, make known among the nations what he has done. Sing to him, sing praise to him, tell of all his wonderful acts, glory in his holy name. Let the hearts of those who seek the Lord rejoice. Look to the Lord and his strength, seek his face always. Remember the wonders he has done, his miracles, and the judgment he pronounced. You, his servants, the descendants of Abraham, his chosen ones, the children of Jacob. Heavenly Father, we thank you for this morning. It is indeed that we are gathered here this morning to sing your praises, and you are praised alone. Yet as we come together this morning, Help us to put aside all our worries and concerns and heavy burdens of our hearts aside at the foot of the cross and help us to worship you, praise you, and sing of your wondrous love and mercy for us this morning. And be with us this hour. May you be lifted up and glorified alone and always. Christ in my prayer. Amen. Good morning, church. If you could please stand as able and sing with me hymn number 384, Spirit Song. i 
Please turn with me to hymn number 221, All Praise to Our Redeeming Lord. be seated. At this time, we continue our worship through giving you the offering. As, as I invite up the ushers forward, let us prepare our hearts and minds to give unto the Lord.
Please stand for doxology. Heavenly Father, as we come before you in worship and praise and adoration, we come with an offering, little portions of many blessings you've given us. God, may you take this offering, offering of our lives, offering of our money, and offering of our time, and offering of our hearts. God, may you take this offering and use it for your glory and your honor and to further your kingdom. In Christ's name I pray, amen. Uh, please be seated. So before we uh, go into our time of uh, corporate prayer together, as I mentioned earlier during our announcement, uh, it is Ms. Hyun Yerim's uh, last Sunday with us, and she has faithfully served as a, our choir uh, director, a music director for the last four years, since 2019, five years. So five years since 2019. Uh, so uh, she has been she has done a wonderful job, uh, and obviously I think everybody enjoyed uh, our music ministry uh, here. So we just want to uh, recognize her uh, as she goes on her way with her husband. Uh, so for so. Uh, Again, this is the, uh, you know, on the back it says, Miss, Miss Hyun, Edin, thank you for your faithful service to the Lord and common ground traditional service. You had made an eternal impact on the lives of many soldiers' families through your music ministry. May the Lord of, Lord of Peace himself give you peace, peace at all times in every situation. September 2023. So, uh, well, thank you for your service. And, uh, <laughs> What? No, 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 stay up here. I just want everyone to hear your story. It's hard to believe. It's been five years. Five years. You know, we got here just a couple of weeks before Sister Yerim. Um, I don't know how my heart's going to handle next Sunday when, when I don't see her um, because I've seen her almost every Sunday for the last five years. And the anointing the Lord has placed on your gift is obvious. And, and myself, this entire congregation, has been blessed by this gift. And I just um, I, I wish and I pray as you and Adam move into the new season of your life that you continue to glorify the Lord just as you have these past five years with your gift. And um, if I may, let's pray. Um, if you would, if you want, just kind of hold your hand out as, as we pray for, for Sister Yarrow. Father, thank you. Thank you, Lord, for the, the service, Lord, the dedication to your honor and your glory that our sister has shown for weeks week upon week father the blessings of common ground have been many through the music ministry and lord i just pray now that you continue to bless and anoint her gift father that that you use her for your glory every every day of her life as she walks through the new journey father i pray as as her and adam go through this season of separation lord that even as newlyweds, their hearts grow fonder and more in love, Father, with each other and you during their time of separation, Father. 
when they are back pre-united, Lord, just bless the ministry, Lord, and provide the guidance, Father, as she continues to faithfully serve you, Father. It's in Jesus' name I pray. Amen. Thank you. All right, well, let's give her a round. With that, the Bible says there's a season for everything. Uh, so we are, the, the music ministry will go through some changes. So please do pray for us as we uh, seek new leadership for music ministry and how we can best continue to uh, support this uh, wonderful service with the wonderful music. Uh, so please do pray, uh, pray with us. At this time, we'll continue our worship through uh, uh, pastoral prayer and praying for one another. And we'll take some time and pray silently. Uh, we need to come before God. And if there's anything that we need to sin, that we need to confess before God, we need to confess before God. The Bible tells us God is holy God. He cannot tolerate sin. Any sin cannot be in God's presence. But because of the blood of Christ, we can come before the Lord and we forget about God's holiness. But God is still holy. And we need to act accordingly. We need to present ourselves before the Lord accordingly. So if there's any sin in our lives, we need to confess before God. The Bible tells us that if you come to, come to this sanctuary to offer a sacrifice, and if there's anything against your brother, leave that offering there and go back and get it right your brother, and then come back and give offering. So uh, say if there's anything that in your heavy on your heart, we'll come before the Lord and confess, repent before the Lord. And then uh, I'll lead us in a pastoral prayer together. And then we'll uh, end by reciting the Lord's Prayer together. So let us pray. Loving God, we thank you and give you praise and honor for you are good and your love endures forever. Although you poured out your love for us through Jesus Christ who shed his precious blood on the cross, we have sinned against you by disobeying your commandments to love one another. We repent of our sins this morning and please forgive us for our sins and draw us close to you by renewed spirit. As we gather this morning to sing praises to you and sing of your wonderful acts, we come with a prayer request, praises, and deep cries of our heart. Please hear our prayers and answer them according to your will. We lift up and remember those among us who have been stricken with the physical sicknesses. God, we pray that you put your hand of healing upon them and heal them of all their sicknesses. We lift up everyone around the world who are affected by natural disasters and ongoing wars. We commit them into your care, God. Please place a hedge of protection around them and watch over them. We pray for the leadership of the United States and Republic of Korea. May they seek to better serve these two great nations and may they always be led by your spirit. We also lift up every service member, DOD civilians, and family members here at Camp Humphrey, especially those who are here unaccompanied without their families. Keep them strong until they are all reunited with their loved ones. As many Christians in Humphrey's area and around the world gathered this morning to worship and praise you, help us to worship you and you alone, God. We pray that many will hear your voice and experience your love this morning. We pray for this common ground service that we will be the salt and light of the Humphreys community as you commanded us to be. May this service bring peace, comfort, and hope for those seeking the truth, seeking you, the Almighty God, in this community. We ask your double portions of blessing upon Chaplain Jin Sup Lee this morning as he brings forth your word for us. Allow him to speak boldly the truth that you will, you will have us know this morning. 
May the thoughts and meditations of his heart be pleasing unto you. And we pray that only your name be exalted this hour and every day of our lives. We pray and ask all these things in the name of our Savior, Jesus Christ, who taught us how to pray by saying, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil, for thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever and ever. Amen.
Good morning. The scripture reading for this morning is, there's a change, it is from Jeremiah chapter 18 verses 1 through 6, and you can find that on page 631 in your pew Bibles. Please stand, if able, for the reading of the word. Jeremiah chapter 18 verses 1 through 6. This is the word that came to Jeremiah from the Lord. Go down to the potter's house, and there I will give you my message. So I went down to the potter's house, and I saw him working at the wheel. But the pot he was shaping from the clay was marred in his hands. So the potter formed it into another pot, shaping it as seemed best to him. Then the word of the Lord came to me. He said, Can I not do with you, Israel, as this potter does, declares the Lord. Like clay in the hand of the potter, so are you in my hand, Israel. The word of the Lord. Please be seated. Once again, you know, let's say hello to one another, quick. I am uh, so glad to be up here to, you know, deliver the gospel message uh, to you guys uh, this morning. Uh, I'm kind of you know, a little nervous, to be honest with you. I don't know why. My heart goes, like, a little too faster than, you know, normal. <laughs> so... Uh, let me start up with uh, this. Have you guys just seen like you know the the car in you know, a bumper sticker? Uh, it's like in you know, the back of in you know, a car bumper. It says you know baby babies on the board, and somewhere it says you know elderly driver please be patient, and then somewhere it says you know back bumper uh, signs caution this vehicle frequently stop, stay back, I may roll backward and then back off, right? But I noticed, you know, one sign kind of, you know, weird on the back of the bumper while I was driving on a highway, uh, not here, but the state side. It says, history. It, it wasn't written not together. Uh, it just written, you know, separately, you know, his story. And that, you know, pretty much describe uh, what history is to us. It is, a, you know, his story of God from the, you know, creation until now. God is involved in history. Throughout the world, uh, in order to carry out uh, his story, God called us, you know, he called the human mankind, and we are not someone who could really say, you know, I'm a great person, I'm a perfect person. Yet, God chose us. If we see the Bible, God chose you know, Abraham to you know, start a nation, and he chose Noah to start in you know, a world again. And God chose Moses to, you know, deliver his people out of Egypt. And also God chose, you know, David to bring down a giant. Uh, and God chose a woman named Mary to bring out Messiah. And God chose little boy's lunch in order to feed multiple people. And God chose Paul in order to share the gospel to the end of the world. So God is into his business to using men and women in order to carry out his works through the history. Uh, here's his pattern. God is not using uh, external ordinary people. He always used uh, on ordinary people. We think, you know, these people who are in the uh, Bible, uh, we believe, you know, we think that, you know, they are super human being, but they are not super human being. They are common people like you and I. So that is God's specialty to, to take something uh, that is unordinary and turn it into uh, extraordinary. God is into his business to restoring and reshaping, remolding something that doesn't seem great to something to you know, great. So we may be you know, skeptical, but we'll never know until what we are you know, capable, capable of doing until we are grabbed by you know, God's hand. So yesterday, uh, I went to the store called, you know, Panda Market, and I bought, you know, this clay. You know, as you see, it looks like a poop, right? But it gets on, you know, a potter's hand, right? Potter could mold it, reshape it into something great and you know, wonderful. 
So we see clay will be nothing until potter gets it. It is worthless and you know, shapeless. But when potter gets clay on his hand, he can mold it and shape it into something great and wonderful. God is calling his people to really be shaped and molded in order to be used to you know, shape the uh, world. God is into recruiting his uh, workers to be part of his history. So if we don't serve God, then we are going to you know, serve something else. And if God's hands doesn't get hold of us, and then something else is going to you know, hold of us. And something else wants to grab onto us and hang on to us and use us for you know, different stuff. Right? Without heart, you know, there's a tug of war, a struggle in our heart. We know as a Christian we need to you know, serve our God, yet we are not confident that we know we just go in 100% within our God, but he may not deliver you know, what we want, what we need it. Right? There's an, a sense of doubt within us. Not being able to trust God there's a struggle, war, there's a talk of war within our heart. But we put our one hands into a war and then the other hands into you know, God just in case, you know, if God doesn't deliver, then I need something to you know, fall back on. But in that struggle, God is saying, don't live that kind of life, but trust in me and see what's going to happen. And also Jesus said in Matthew chapter 6, verse 24, no one can serve two masters. That's obvious. You know, we can't serve you know, two masters. It's going to be crazy. The fact that there's a lot of people you know, torn between you know, two different worlds, uh, we feel like you know, we need to be hold of potter and be shaped and molded on Sunday. But when Monday comes, uh, we feel like you know, we need to go back to you know, our reality in our world that we are in a part of it. But in Romans chapter 13, verse 11 through you know, 12, says, and do this understanding the present time, the hour has already come for you to wake up from your slumber because our salvation is nearer uh, now than when we first believe the night is nearly over, the day is almost here. So let us put aside the deeds of darkness and put, put on the you know, armor of light. Meaning that Spiritually, like we have been sleeping, we have been unconscious, and we have been kind of unknowing where we are going. These verses are saying, you know, we can't go back in force to have dual life. The Bible says we have to choose our life, whether we are going through darkness or in light. See, we need to examine our heart, examine ourselves. Just as you meet the you know, qualification to applying for you know, certain jobs, we need to be a certain qualification to be a servant of our God. Uh, 2 Timothy chapter 2, verse 15 says this, Do your best to present yourself to God as a one approved, uh, a worker who does not need to be ashamed and who correctly handles the uh, word, words of truth. We need to be proved, approved that we are a worker of our God. And we see God takes his prophet Jeremiah according to our passage today, uh, he takes Jeremiah to, you know, Potter's house, and he shows him and, you know, teaches his lesson. Uh, the lesson is God is our potter, and we are his clay. So clay is worthless, like I explained before. You know, clay is formless. On the hands of potter, it turns into something great and wonderful. In order for us to really be used for the purpose of God and for us to make dent a uh, history of God. First of all, we need to examine our heart, and then we need to be moldable and teachable. So potter could use all kinds of clay, but there's a one clay that you know, potter cannot use, uh, which is in a hardened clay. So I just you know, opened this uh, from the bag yesterday, let it dry up. So let's say I'm a potter. I try to mold this and then shape it into something. It's already hard, dry it up. I can't do nothing with this, right? So our heart has to be moldable, teachable, so God could, you know, uh, reshape us to do his, you know, work. So, you know, like he was 
the Jesus was uh, great to everybody. He was, you know, uh, got along with you know, everybody, even uh, lepers, the outcasters, uh, people who are sick, right? And all these people he befriended except uh, this one group of people, actually, you know, a couple in a group of people. Uh, they call him you know, Sadducees and Pharisees. Why Jesus didn't get along with these people? Uh, in fact, you know, he got so upset at these two group of, group of people, and we normally don't expect Jesus to, you know, cuss at, you know, people, but he was so mad at him, he ended up cussing at him. Yaish, mamma mia, you know, tomb or something, right? So why Jesus was so mad at them? What, what was so bad about them? Sadducees and Pharisees and lawmaker, they are the one who had a hardened heart. Their clay was moldable, and they they were you know, so proud of you know who they are, and they were you know no th- there's no moment of teaching uh, for them. They felt like you know we are the chief, we know everything. I have done this and I have done it before, so I don't have to do it anymore. That that was in you know, a life that they had. So when we become you know Christian for a long time, and attending the church for a long time, so we can't become such a person. We become sort of, you know, arrogant and, you know, quiet person. I'm not saying, you know, all of you are, you know, like that. But there's, you know, people like this. You know, they've been attending the church for, you know, long enough time, right? They're acting like, you know, they know everything. They are, you know, holy person, right? But God wants people who are teachable and moldable so that he could, you know, make and shape them into the way he wants it. And then the purpose is that he wants to make them to be part of his you know, history. All of us have you know, some part of our life is already hardened. So before I went to the seminary in, in, in Stateside, uh, I didn't want to leave my family. I didn't leave my home country. I didn't want to leave my friends too. But God kind of you know, led me into uh, Stateside and then continue study about his work to be lifelong servant. Right? And then I ended up serving at the Korean Immigration Church. As you guys know, there are two different congregations in Korean Immigration Church. One is for you know, Korean, right? which is called you know, uh, KM, Korean Ministry. And then the other called English Ministry, we call it uh, EM. So I was more comfortable in Korean, right? So I thought the senior pastor will hire me as a, one of the you know, Korean congregation a pastor, but he ended up hiring me as an English pastor. I was shocked. And then I uh, look up on the sky, Lord, really? You gotta be kidding me. I'm not that, you know, great uh, speaker in English. Come on, please help me. But then, you know, I ended up studying, you know, serving at the English ministry because I didn't want to get fired. <laughs> Just like this, you know, my heart was, you know, uh, already dried up and hardened. But now, I'm, here I am, standing in front of you know, our congregation, delivering his, his message, trying to, trying to do some you know, good stuff for uh, his kingdom. Right? But one time I get a chance to uh, preach at the you know, gospel uh, church. It was one of my uh, seminary uh, homework. So I got a chance to you know, preach a gospel service. It was my friend's church. And then it's, it's really, really fun to you know, preach uh, at the gospel service. They were like, you know, moving, dancing, singing, right? I don't have move, but, you know, they will let you know how you are doing, why are you preaching. If they feel blessed, they will say, preach, say it, right? But if you're not doing well, they will let you know too. They will say, help him, Lord. So <laughs> I was heard that a couple of times. I was like getting nervous and nervous, right? But I'm looking at, you know, Lord, please, I want to hear preachable, right? <laughs> and then uh, Spanish church is the same. Like, it, it's really fun to, you know, preach at in a Spanish church too. They are dancing in the middle of service, you know, they are really fun people. But Asian congregation, they kind of like uh, pre-reserved. 
you know, we, we kind of like get, you know, permission to let, permission to say amen, right? You don't get the joke? <laughs> not, not all of you, you know, who are, you know, considered as, you know, uh, Central Asian people, okay? But you got to be, be, be careful what you're saying to, you know, God. Because God has a sense of humor. Every time you say, I say, I don't want to do this, you know, I don't want to go there, somehow God makes you to do it. Somehow God will make you be there. Because, you know, he wants to, you know, mold us and shape us in order for us to ex experience, you know, God and be part of his history. The word of God says uh, in Hebrew chapter 3, verse 15, says this, as has just been said, today, if you hear his voice, do not harden your heart as you did in rebellion. When God speaks to us, do not harden our heart because God will make us to do something wonderful for his kingdom. And he may want to take our life and then make it something very exciting, You'll be surprised. Therefore, we need to be moldable and teachable. And also, we need to be a good clay to be part of God's work. And to be in a good clay, we need to be available. When God needs us, we got to be unavailable. So, Chaplain Che Lee was you know, mentioning about, you know, we need more volunteers to serve our congregation. Hey, church, you got to be available when God needs you. So this is time for you, 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 time for you to be uh, available for his you know, kingdom work. Amen? All right. So hopefully by you know, next Sunday, we'll have a lot of you know, volunteers to you know, serve in you know, a children's ministry or orchestra or our uh, choir team. All right. Amen. So some are become flower-based, you know, water future. Right? And then some are a beautiful dish, some have become soup pot. Right? The best way to serve its purpose is to be on available when it's needed. So, but there is a dilemma. The potter makes us to be used for a certain purpose. But we need to have it available when potter needs it, but we have something else filled with our heart. And we have signs says in our heart, it says occupy, in use not available. We see in Potter's eyes, availability is more important than our ability. I'll say again, availability is more important than our ability. So we may be claimed to be powerful. We may be claimed to be talented. We may be claimed to be gifted. But that means nothing unless we are available for our God. So what, is, what does it mean to be unavailable? Listen to this you know, Christian model, uh, Bonhoeffer. He says, we must ready to allow ourselves to be interrupted by God. God will constantly cross our path and canceling our plans by sending us people with claims and petitions. We all have a plan. We have lifetime plan how we want to build our family, build our life, and how we're going to live our life. Sometimes God crossed that plan. He changed it and, you know, canceled our plan. When I went to college, you know, I had a, a physics major. I wanted, I wanted to become uh, a you know, semiconductor, and it didn't happen. I was so excited at the time. And he crossed that my plan and changed my plan. And he decided to be, I, I decided to be in you know, a merchant to make a, a lot of money. I wanted to, you know, not depend on my father. And I want to make, you know, more money than my father. And I pray to God. I want to be a good elder, rich elder, in order for me to set up the, you know, scholarship for, you know, PK. PK stands for, you know, pastor's kid. And also MK, missionary kid, and all the churches. Lord, I will serve you more when I make more money. And I will do all the good work for your kingdom, Lord. God, you are going to be so happy because I have this kind of plan. So God, you need to bless me. I was so dumb. I wasn't that, you know, you know mature enough at that time. But 
Here God comes and he crossed my plan and changed entire my course of my life. He called me into ministry. We see when God changed our plans, sometimes we get, you know, like really frustrated. And sometimes we feel like, God, why? Why you change this plan? It's like good plan. But once God crossed our path and changed our plan, he in, his intention is not to ruin us, but to bless us, to make us part of his history making. When God created each one of us, we live a unique life that God already laid out for us. There could be a difficult time, dif uh, difficult life. Sometimes, you know, we want to choose an uh, easy road, but God turns it into his road, which is in a difficult you know, road. People pray to, you know, God for, you know, comfort, comfort and comfort of life. I mean, sometimes I do that too, but he made me go through difficult time because, you know, there's a reason for it. His reason, not my reason. Sometimes God shapes us and molds us into certain kind of path that life could be in you know, a difficult. But no matter how difficult life is, don't give up. Whenever I think about them not giving up, one person that always comes in my mind, uh, his name is Abraham Lincoln. He was a man who never gives up. As a lawyer, he wasn't that, you know, doing well. He was failed after, you know, uh, he, he, he just failed time after time. However, he endures uh, in the race of life who wins at the end. It is not a strong but win, but one who endures is a victor. So how long willing to endure the hardship that comes for living? the life that God has designed for you and I. How long are you willing to endure when hardship comes in your life? People ask, you know, Abraham Lincoln, what made you persevere to the end? And he always tells the story of his mother. I learned the Bible from my mother. Every day, he put his hands on me, pray for me. And now you tell me, a nameless, you know, uh, uh, somewhat meaningless woman who raising her son, teaching the Bible, and pray for her child. Was she a history maker, or was she just an you know, ordinary person who meant nothing? Think about what Abraham Lincoln did. He changed the history of the world, not only U.S., of the way that, you know, people view and, you know, people with different, you know, skin color, Many people call him hero. Now, who made him into a hero? Women who wanted to you know, raise her child, be man of God, and she was a history maker. Sometimes we feel like you know, what we do is meaningless. What we do is pointless. But no matter how little, how insignificant we may feel about what we do, if we do it for in the glory of God, if we do it with the intention of wanting to really bring change in lives and in the kingdom of God, we can make a huge difference. And really need to you know, see where our attention is at. Because if we are looking at the wrong thing, then we could easily give up things uh, at the first of you know, hardship comes in our life. There's in a monastery, uh, a lot of people wants to be in a monks uh, in certain you know, countries. Initially, many signed up, and as time went on, uh, and courses and discipline become you know, very hard and very difficult. So many people start living this in a monastery, uh, and one of the students there uh, asked the chief monk, why you are not stopping them? Why you allow them to leave the monastery? And after thinking for a while, the chief monk told the student, you know, when they go out for you know, hunting, for rabbit, many dogs are used, not one dog, right? But the you know, one dog who sees the rabbit will start barking and go after the you know, rabbit. Rest of the dog, we will follow that dog. And they will, you know, barking and running after that dog 
without knowing you know, where they are going. When they get tired by you know, chasing the rabbit, they will encounter you know, obstacles because they don't know what they were you know, chasing, and they will eventually give up. But then one dog who witnessed you know, the moving rabbit, he will never give up. And because he was a witness of a you know, rabbit, we, need, we also need to meet our Jesus Christ as a you know, personal Savior. Then when hardship comes, you know, Jesus will help him not to give up. So since we have you know, a couple, not a couple, many uh, high school students, one day uh, they, they were going to you know, college. A lot of you know, uh, students, they went to you know, college, they leaving the church. Right? Why so many young people they leaving the church? Because personally, I don't think you know they met Jesus Christ as their personal savior. And in their journey, they never encountered Jesus in a personal way. A personal way, they went to along within a friend, and they went along with a group. That is, you know, why you know they give up when hardship comes in their life. So we need to be in a moldable and shape the way that God desires in the potter's hand. And we need to be available, and we also need to be willing to endure that hardship that comes in our way. And in that, in a hardship, we never give up because God desires to see you and, I, see you and I to be his story maker. The potter, sometimes in his hand, whatever he was shaping clay, he will uh, kind of you know, start it over. Right now, our life is shattered into the peace. And then God decides to you know, break it and remake it again. And we are in the process of uh, remade by our God. So today's passage is, you know, lesson is God is our power and then we are the clay. So remember, we need to make our heart moldable and teachable. And we need to be available for, you know, whenever God needs us. And then when hardship comes, do not give up. Throughout the week, you know, hopefully, you know, you will, you know, remember this, and then we have, you know, some parents, and then some of will be in the parents later. And I'm hoping and praying that you will pray for your kids like this. Amen? And then uh, I will close with, you know, closing prayer here. God, we thank you for, you know, we could come and time to time we hear the you know, challenges telling us, you know, really live our life the way that you desire for us to live. It could be sometimes, you know, painful to hear and difficult to, you know, really carry it out. But Lord, will you give us, you know, courage to say, I am willing to obey God no matter what happened in my life. Help us to commit it our life at the potter's hand to be shaped and molded into your desire. We pray in your holy precious name. Amen. If you could please stand for the final hymn. Hymn number 415, We Are Called to Be God's People.
standing for the benediction. Receive the benediction. Wherever you have been, God has prepared you for this moment. Believe this. May God bless everyone here to become history maker. We pray in Jesus' name. Amen.